best can I do this? I mean, how can I do what I'm doing better than I did the last time? I'm always trying to improve my performance. I think that's, that's one thing I must continue to do. So this lab requires me to enter a digit and only print the even values starting from 0 to that digit. So if I enter 49, it should end on 48. Right, right, okay. Now the way I did it was I data type for num, data type for start, and uh, initialized it by making it equal to 0, so we have a starting point. I let the user know to input a value and then here they can do it okay then the for loop is the what was it called the initial condition initialized test the, sorry the initialized expression which is it starts at zero the start number needs to be less than or equal to the number we input and then if that is true then start gets an increase now we have an if condition in here to only allow uh, numbers that are divisible by two and have no remainder to be printed so these numbers which are even are the ones that are printing However, if we wanted the odd, how would we do that? Huh. Well, let me think about it. Alright, there we go. So if we wanted the odd, we would use the expression of um, the uh, exclamation point. I forgot the name right now. 
but it's basically saying that if it is not equal to zero, then it prints. So it's negating the the value of wanting. I don't know, how do I say this? If the expression is equal is divided by two and it equals zero, then what we want here is the inverse. If the expression is divided by two and it does not equal to zero, then it prints. So then now it's how it, we would get the uh, uh, odd numbers printed. That's why we have one, three, five, seven, so forth. We don't have zero because zero is divisible, divisible by two and it equals zero. So that doesn't meet the criteria. It doesn't even meet the criteria of the lab. I just wanted to see if I could do it.
So, constants starting kilometers per hour 60, max kilometers per hour 130, and then it, it increases from 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130. Defining the variables here, after that, this is what we'll print out. So we'll have two uh, rows, row, or sorry, two columns, kilometers per hour on one side, miles per hour on the other, split the line, and then the for loop will be one kilometers per hour equals starting kilometers per hour. So when they reach 60 kilometers per hour, then the test will be, are they going below or equal to the max kilometers per hour, which is 130. If they are, then we calculate the miles per hour as, let's say 60 times point, uh, 0.6214, which is the conversion rate. And then it'll display in, let's see, what do we have here? We'll display the first number will be kilometers per hour as a whole number, integer. Then we'll have two spaces. And then it'll print out the miles per hour with a one decimal uh, point. And then it'll go to a new line. All right. It'll keep doing this for loop until it reaches its max kilometers per hour value. And then it'll in increase the uh, the kilometers per hour by an increment. That increment is 10. So, if you're going like 67, it'll do 67 times 0. 0.6214, print that out. And then it'll do 77, and then 87, and then 97, and so forth and so forth. And then... Yeah, that'll be it. And once it reaches its uh, threshold of max kilometers per hour, it'll stop doing its, um, well, it'll do it one last time, but then once it's past it, then it'll stop.
is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. We have two strings, S1, S2. First, we're going to check if the length of S1 is equal to length 2. Anyone real, really quickly, can you tell me what is this, the length of S1 and S2? First, we're going to check if the length of S1 is equal to length 2. Anyone real, really quickly, can you tell me what is this, the length of S1 and S2? First, we're going to check, check if the length of S1 is equal to length 2. Anyone real, really quickly, can you tell me what is this, the length of S1 and S2? How many characters are in there? 10, right? Because we're including spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So they are equal, first of all. So we're going to go inside this if statement. Then we're going to go for every character in S1. And then we're going to have a nested loop. For every character in S2, we're going to check if the two characters are the same. And if they are, we're going to print this common letter statement. And then we're going to break. OK, great. We have, we have some good competition here. So let's see. The outer for loop is first going to go through the letter M. Okay. So this is uh, so first it's going to look at M, right? For char in S1, the first character in S1 is an M. Then we're entering inside this other for loop for char two in S2. So I'm going to say for this M, I'm going to look at I which is the first character in S2. If the character 1 is equal to character 2, they're not. Don't do anything. Keep going to the next character in S2, okay? So that you don't do anything there. The next character. There shouldn't be a common letter at all. Because <clears throat> M with I, I with space, T with R, space U, U, L, space E, R space, O, M, C, I, K, T. Turn S2 is a space. M does not equal a space, so you don't do anything. Two, something. Make that a better check. Here, where we're comparing M with an M, and we say, yes, they are equal. So we're going to print out something. Make that a better check. We're going to print common letter, and then we're going to Break. This break says, do not keep looking at the remaining letters in S2. Okay. So once we've found one that fits, that that once we found one that matches, stop right here, break, and print out the thing, and then go on to looking at I, which is the next letter in S1, and you do the same thing. Compare I with I. Okay. So once we common letter, and then we're going to break equal, and then an E, so you don't, which is the first character in S2. OK, so I interpret it wrong. So this is saying we start with them. And then we're going to compare to the the first for to each individual letter. If it matches a letter, 
it'll stop and it'll print common letter. So does that mean it'll do that for every single one? So M will be all the way down here. I will be here. Nothing for, or actually T's right here, U's right here. R's right there. There's no O. Uh, there's no C and there's no K. So MIT would print, U would print, and R would print. OCK would not. So if the character one is equal to character two, three, four, they're five, not. Six, seven. Don't seven do anything. Common letters. Keep going to the next character in a. The next character is an R. Don't do anything. The next character is U. Don't do anything. Then an L. Don't do anything. Then an E. Don't do anything. Space. And then suddenly we get to an M. So we're still in the outer for loop. We're still looking at M, right? And we're comparing M with every other letter inside the S2. And suddenly we reach here where we're comparing M with an M and we say, yes, they are equal. So we're going to print out something. Make that do better check. We're going to print common letter and then we're going to break. This break says, do not keep looking at the remaining letters in S2. Okay? So once we've found one that fits, that, that once we found one that matches, stop right here, break, and print out the thing, and then go on to looking at I, which is the next letter in S1. And you do the same thing. Compare I with I. We have a match. Perfect, right off the bat. So you print out another common letter, and then you break, which means don't keep looking at the remaining letters. And then you look at, since you broke out of the inner loop, you go to the outer loop, the next letter is a T, and so on and so on. So essentially you're comparing every letter out here in S1 with every single letter in S2 until you find one that matches. As soon as you do, you exit. So if you, if you actually run this program, it's going to print out seven times, I think. We can check it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Nice, majority of the people are right. If you got this wrong, please go back and try to trace through your program. So that means step by step, try to figure out what values of variables are. Okay, this isn't even to what I'm supposed to be learning. This is Python, I'm supposed to be learning uh, Java. All right, well, at least I know it's transferable, so that's something. For loops and strings have a special relationship. The idea of a for loop is to run a fixed number of times. You can write it in other ways, but its primary purpose is to start at a given point, go up to a certain point, and increment at a given rate. And then strings have a fixed length. So if you have a statement that's able to start at a beginning point and at an end point, and then you have something that has a fixed starting point and a fixed ending point, hopefully you can see why those two go together well. And that is the case that we have with for loops and strings because strings have a definite starting place and a definite ending place. The ending place is its length and the beginning place is its index. Now it's important to remember that the index is always one less than what the length is going to be because the length starts counting at one whereas the index starts counting at zero. So if you divided a string out into its individual characters, its first character would be at index zero, but the first index would be counted as one slot. And so this becomes important when we get to the end of a string because the index is always going to be one less than the length. And so we're going to see that's important when we're working with our for loop. Now in this video, what I'm trying to do is give tasks to perform with for loops on strings. And so the first task is to print the word repaid by visiting and printing each of its characters using a for loop. So we're going to start at the beginning of the word repaid and visit each of its characters and print out each of its character corner. And then we have a T chart, which is going to track what I is going to be. And then we're going to have some output at each iteration of the loop. Now let's see how we would write this for loop. Well, first of all, where would we start? 
Well, we'd want to start at zero because that is the index of where the first letter is located. Next, where would we want to end? Well, we'd want to end at the length of the word. No matter what it is, I'd want to stop at its length. So instead of saying, I want to end at five, where the last index As I said in the task, we're going to count up by ones. We're going to go through each individual index and visit every letter inside of the word. Now the question becomes, what are we going to do when we visit each individual index? We're going to print out the character that we find there. So we're going to use word.charat i, and i is going to move as the loop iterates. All right, let's go ahead and trace our way through this loop. As I said before, we're going to start at zero. Next, we're going to check the condition, make sure that zero is less than the length it is. So therefore we get true. So then what we do is we go into the system out print statement, which is going to print the character at I and the character at I is R. So we output R. Next, we're going to increment I. I is going to 